Gotcha, gotcha. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on into Valorant Sunday Showdown number 61. I'm Last, and I'm joined here by the venerable Chad Lantis, the man under the sea. And we're going to be bringing you winner semifinals, which is Scourge and Pros versus Black Dragons. Yeah, we've got players on Scrunch of Pros like Bjor, JMO, Critical, names that you'll notice on other teams. So they decided to go ahead and make their own kind of makeshift team for this tournament, and they've been dominant so far. And uh, I'm looking at them to be the favorite scoring this match, but that doesn't say that it could go either way because it's a best of one series. It can go either way, almost like a flip of a coin, whichever team can show up best on this map. Yeah, best of ones are known to be sort of a coin flip from time to time. The better team can sometimes lose the, you know, it's just up to whoever's playing the best on map one. Yeah. And speaking of map one, where are we going to be going? We're going straight to bind, taking our teleporters all across the map with a lot of rotations, sand in our feet, and a lot of grit in our teeth as we try to figure out a way on the defensive side to figure out where the rotations come through, which typically actually succeed most of the time because lately by statistics and rank queues and a lot of the pro tournaments I've been seeing, it's pretty defensive favored side of the map here. So we're looking to see a little bit of a swing. If you see a team that you're rooting for falling behind on offense, don't worry. They can come back later, most likely. Or if they're ahead early, then you probably should get excited because when they go on defense, it should be looking even better for them. Yeah, and I do believe that it is going to be scrounge and pros who are going to be starting out on the defensive side. So maybe that squad will be looking to uh, sort of get themselves a little bit of a lead built up before they're stuck on the attacking side, try and get as many rounds under their belt as possible before they have to swap sides. But that also could be a bit of a detriment as... It always opens you up for a big old comeback right from behind if you can't build up enough of a nest egg of rounds or if you're just not really feeling it on the attack. Yeah, and with those rotations as a point as well, it works for both the offense and defense. And an agent that we've been seeing a lot on buying lately kind of poking its head out of the water is Yoru doing a lot of teleportation plays. Thanks, I know you're, I know you're laughing. It is definitely Tenz's fault, but we're seeing <laughs> it more and more happening lately. And this is just an agent that has a really interesting play style where you can't do straight up uh, Valorant like most agents can do. You have to do a lot of really scrappy push and pulls, bait and switch tactics to really make the other team wonder where exactly is this player because you can use the teleporters on the map to your advantage with your own personal gate crash teleporter on the agent you just take a teleporter activate gate, gate crash suddenly the enemy doesn't know are you through the teleporter or not it's like an old school omen tactic with shot step except you can use it a lot more often and a lot more aggressively than omen yeah and that's really the name of the game on a map like bind you mentioned it earlier the teleporters are there and it gives you the opportunity to, like you said, bait and switch your opponents. It's all about pulling the wool over their eyes, getting onto a site where there are less defenders, or making sure that you have all of the defenders stacked up on a site waiting for the attackers just to come crashing in into your crosshairs. So it's all about trying to make sure that you can outthink them. You don't get outthought. And speaking of other agents, what other kinds of what other kinds of characters are you expecting to see pulled out in these team comps on Bind? As far as initiators, Sova is basically a staple on every map except for Split right now. Uh, it has been since the game started, so I'd be surprised to see if we don't have a Sova. If not, it probably would be the uh, Sky. Uh, I know KO is available, but I don't think this is one of his best maps. Uh, as far as controllers, we're likely to see a, a Viper. Uh, both for one-way setups, especially an A-hold, are really good. Uh, Omen can do one-ways as well on a couple locations. Um, sometimes we see Astra, but lately not so much. And honestly, like this is a cool map as far as controllers go because all four controllers are viable in this map, in my opinion. I even see Brimstone from time to time. And lately with nerfs to Astra, we've actually been seeing a prevalent abundance of Brimstone play as of late. And I'd say this is one of his better maps. Yeah, and speaking of characters who it's one of their better maps on, you can't really talk about Bind without talking about Killjoy. Killjoy, one of the most prolifically picked agents on Bind alongside mm -hmm. Sova, like you mentioned, because, of course, Sova has the highest pick rate in all of Valorant, but let's not bring that up right now. Killjoy, so, so very strong on Bind, especially on that B site with the little generator tube. It makes it so very easy to hold on to site with the, uh, with the turret, with the nanostorm grenades, with everything else in her kit. 
But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the agent selection here on Bind. We've got Scourgeon Pros, or Scrounge and Pros, sorry, excuse me, on the defense. All well, the Black Dragons will be starting out on the attack. We already see the Sova's locked in. Yeah, it's enough theory crafting out of the way. Definitely see that Sova. They're even Scrounge and Pros running with the Sky as well. Double Initiated, which is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, actually, uh, compositions out there right now. They might even go Double Duelist, which would be nuts. Uh, if Valen does lock in the arena, which I would not be surprised if they do. Raze is also a pick I'm seeing on both sides of the server right now, which is a great agent to send the paint shells, the boom bots through those teleporters, especially if you set up like an A site uh, trying to defend towards the A short location. If they're pushing through B short into hookah, just throw your utility through that teleporter, assist your team to make it a little bit of a buffer for your team to make the rotation through. Stall that aggression from the attacking side of it. Yeah, um, it's definitely like two very interesting comps coming through from each side onto bind. But it just remains to be seen. We got to see how they make use of the agents because at the end of the day, you got to remember that all of them do have guns in their hands and it's not yep. abilities that win the game. Exactly. So going to be whoever's shooting best, whoever's shooting first. And more so now ready. than it used to be, too, because they made a lot of... Uh, the recent patch has been a lot of nerfs to abilities, higher costs to buy abilities, things like that. So even less flashes for, like, Sky it only has two flashes now from you know, the Guiding Light versus the old three. So it has been a lot more gunplay now. So while agents still play a big role, it does come down to you need to hit your shots more than ever now. Yeah, I almost feel like uh, Riot realized their mistake with how uh, ability-heavy the meta had gotten for a while. If you remember all the way back, uh, everyone was memeing with, like, the precise gunplay memes. And they were like, oh, hang on, it really isn't. So let's, let's go ahead and draw back on the abilities just slightly. But we are going to be getting right into the first round of Scrounge and Pros versus the Black Ooh. Dragon Society. And already off the bat, uh, Diamonds fan, hello? Are you going to be able to pick up two? Yes, off the bat, both Denya and Scrounge are going to fall before they can find any impact because they just walk right on past that enemy raise. Who's going to go with a very risky, aggressive, defensive uh, strategy here for that first pistol round? If you're going to do it on pistol round, first and foremost, it is going to be your better option. But Black Dragon Society, they're just ready for it. And now with the rotation A site, there are the majority of Scrounge and Plows pros available on A site, but... And a three versus four, uh, the player advantage is still definitely going to go towards Black Dragon Society. Actually, I do want to point out that I'm slightly surprised to see Denya. Uh, he was not on the roster originally, but shout out yeah. to my boy Denya. <laughs> holding it down over on Sora, one of the best jets I've ever seen. Was going to fall early on, and now Adept is going to find two. We're not even looking at it. Critical, going to be able to take down Planks. It's all onto him in the 1v3, and he just can't make it work as Adept closes out the 3k on the round. The nice little headshot over to A main. Big way out for Scrounge and Pros there was a critical to make a big play happen on the flank there. Got that kill for sure on A short, but it was a little bit delayed, and the rest of the team went ahead and went into the action a little bit sooner, and Adept cleared them out, so Critical suddenly found himself facing a 1 versus 3 afterwards. A little bit too much, and now they're going to go into possibly a save. Critical going for maybe 4 Spectre here, something I've been seeing a lot more lately in this current meta, is people going for a 4 Spectre despite losing the first round with like that light armor. It takes people off on by surprise a lot, and it's only player doing that on their team so they're going to win out this round a lot of it's going to be coming on the back of critical yeah but you were talking about forces core all the way up on the phantom in round two phantom heavy shields as well uh not really sure how they managed to swing that i think someone else on their team might have bought regardless though is going to be tristy finding the first kill with that bot bulldog Scrounge getting a nice little blind here. They're going to be trying to peek their way out. Denny's going to take the aggressive angle, trying to get the orb. They're going to get shut down and forced to retreat. Great shot by Denya on decor. Going to find it shut down that early aggression from the attackers. And that also takes an early gun out of the mix. They are going to be able to recover that phantom, so it's not going to matter too much. Now in the 4v4, the... they're looking to come in. Yeah, all of Scrunch Pros were able to rotate. They're all going to be here for this fight. 
Oh, but Critical with the spray down going to find both Fan and Adept before being taken down by Tristy. But Tristy is very, very quickly refragged by Denya, and that's going to leave Planks alone in the 1v2 all the way up in Hookah. Trying to find an angle down on the two players, holding a sight, but they're not going to give themselves away too early. Going to make use of the Astro Utility to try and block off a sight line, but Valen might just take the ballsy approach. Peek on through the smoke, and Planks has no idea. He's looking in the complete opposite direction, trying to make his way towards the spike, and he's going to be caught from behind as Denya closes it out. Getting those upgrades as well. Valen even grabs that Bulldog last second, the Phantom Enhance with Denya. That critical double kill with that Spectre came up big. The risk, the gamble paid off big for their team. They are able to get the a little bit of footing as well with a little bit of a slow attack from Black Dragon Society, despite it being an anti-eco overall. Very cautious and patient strategy from them. It worked on the first round because a lot of scrounger pros went aggressive and went past the angles and gave up a double kill early on, but this time around, not so much. Scrounger pros need adapted already. The early flash down long, and it looks like Scrounge is going to be trying out for these early wow. kills, but oh, they're just taken down with one headshot. Right to the dome from Core. He's looking fantastic. Even going to be able to push up and pick up a Vandal. But it's, oh, it's no not way. going to be their undoing as they manage to find another headshot onto Critical. The heal is going to come out too, and they're going to be barely the worse for wear. That's insane. Both rifles losing to the Sheriff of Core. It just drops. It's like, I'm done with this gun. <laughs> I've got my Vandal upgrade already. They even got more upgrades for the SA team, too. So, Black Dragon Society looking so good. But Denya comes back with a double kill. The spray down from Denya was so, so good. You got to wonder a little bit why the two players from Black Dragon Society just kind of lined up for him. Now, speaking of lining up, Valen going to walk himself right into Denya's crosshair. But Denya going to find an immediate kill onto Planks to keep these numbers even. Adept finds Aqua. Now we're in the 1v2. Denya has been the big fragger so far in these first two rounds. He's now yet again stuck in a clutch situation. Van is going to be looking out long to try and clean this up as neither of them have the spike. But Adept is going to be able to clean it up, take down Denya. They don't even need the spike and a thrifty round win for Black Dragon Society. Rough spot for Denya to have to hold a spike location because it's in that kind of hallway area of the B long. Went on an off angle to try to throw off the headshot option to an instant kill, but Adept's shots were too clean. Sniffed out Denya's location too well. And going into this round, they have a couple of rifles that they're buying so far, but they're not going to be able to get a full buy here from Scrounge and Pros. Black Dragon Society, the slow push strategy is working overall for them. But a lot of it is just scrounging pros getting a little bit aggressive and just losing out a couple fights here and there that I feel like they should be. Shots come through and they are so good, but the trades go back and forth. One for one. Now we're in the 4v4. Both teams have lost their big entry duelist. Core going down on one side, Denya on the other. So they're going to be trying to make up the difference, but they don't even need to worry about that numbers game because Adept is going to revive Core right off the bat. A little bit of damage done by Critical, but he's going to be knocked right down for his troubles as he gets the Hunter's Fury off, but is immediately headshotted by Fan. And this is looking like a really good round for Black Dragon Society as they go in sight in a 4v3, make that a 3v2 as the trades go back and forth. Close is such a horrible spot, and same goes for Valen. This is a 1 versus 3 situation, winnable, but unlikely. Valen now coming out from back sight. He's going to be rotating from his own spawn. And in the process of doing so, he's going to find two kills. Now comes down to the one. one and he finds an amazing headshot onto Tristy. Just kind of sitting there. I bet I bet he just hit Alt F10 on his shadow play. He's clipping that. That's going on Twitter. He got the insane 1v3 clutch. And now he's taking his sweet time on his way over to the spike. Doing a lot of the mind games here, just sending a message. Sometimes you win the round, and sometimes you gotta send that message to go along with it. You try to just break down that morale. You just want a one versus three situation post plant when you were able to just instantly find 1v1 after 1v1 on Arena. Didn't even pop any kind of abilities in that situation either. Just straight up gunplay. No, and that's what's so important about those clutch situations is when it comes down to a 1vx, you really, really, really need to make sure that you're isolating those duels because if it comes mm -hmm. to a point where you need to shoot at two people at the same time, it's not really all that possible. So, 
Really good stuff to Valen being able to isolate those into separate duels, getting the clutch, and bringing us to a tied 2-2 scoreline in the process. A lot committed to B site already from Black Dragon Society. They're going basically all in for this location. It's oh going all in is going to backfire on them as Adept gets a little bit too far forward. And oh. Denya going to find two, takes down Planks and Tree Stay, but Fan, not one to be left out of the kill feed. Going to take down Denya in the process. Now we're in a four on two as Fan tries to make his way into the site. The wall bangs are coming through, but they're not going to find their mark. He gets his way in. He's got control of the site. All of the rest of the members of Scrounge and Pros have backed off back into Elbow. Are they going to be able to get the spike down? That's the question. They have to get to it first. Plant's going to come really off, good. but they are known. And the bullets come in too. Valen and Critical combined for two to close out the round. And Scrounge and Pros, despite a slightly slow start, are going to take the lead. Perfect recon bolt right there by Critical. Just gave all the information they need. They knew at least one person was on site. Who, where exactly is the other person? Oculo on the Omen was placed over towards A site. You can take that teleporter like we talked about with teleporters. Rotation's fast. Omen just sitting over there anchoring just in case there's a bait. And then a one person goes A site. Great job by Scrounge and Pros overall. The strategy looks really good. They just go for these really aggressive uh, challenges through like B long, things of that sort. That has backfired a bit. Sent them back a couple of these rounds, but overall in straight up engagements, they've been coming on top. Yeah, and I do want to give Denya a lot of credit. Uh, we kind of glossed over it because the bullets were coming so fast during that round. But the uh, the showstopper coming out, finding two through the smoke, the either the guesswork or the that predictive question. work, whichever one. Really good from him, but speaking of aggression, Critical going to push out, find two headshots while Denya finds another one, and this round has quickly fallen apart for the Black Dragon Society. Yeah, it's an antique around, and Critical's not going to fall to that sheriff yet again. Finished. Scrounge finding another kill as well, and it's all down to Abdept, which is the sheriff in hand. Great <laughs> time, he's still flash by Scrounge. Well, Scrounge is going to be able to find that kill after flashing both himself and his opponent. Scrounge, I, I think you're just supposed to flash him. Might have been a little bit of a panic moment, but regardless, comes sure. out on top, and they pick up their fourth. Scrounge Pro is just going with that W key, fully engaged, high-velocity gameplay, despite being on the defensive side for this map, trying to just abuse that advantage, which the advantage, I think, really comes from playing more standard than what they're doing right now. A lot of risky decisions being made, maybe because it's 10 p.m. and we're just now doing semifinals Eastern time, so they're just ready to get this over, show on the road, got work tomorrow, something that sort, but grab a Red Bull, get your energy high, finish out the fights, and especially easier to do if you have really fast gameplay like Scrounge is doing, and they're winning 4-2 to two right now. They have Empress and Seekers available, no ults at all in Black Dragon Society who's still going a very slow gameplay. It's not working so far. They keep spreading out in a more default setting and they just can't win out these fights against Scrounger Pros. And when they tried going for full set on B long earlier, it didn't work out either. So right now, Black Dragon Society is scratching their heads, trying to figure out exactly what they can do to try to get back in this game. A site seems to be the current plan. Now pushing out. It seems that Scrounge and Pros have decided that they don't want to play defense. They'd rather just play attack on the other side. And that seems oh, to be yeah. their entire strategy as Valen finds a really, really nice shot from behind the new boxes. Aqua pushes out from Lamps and finds another one. Diamonds falls down. And they're just looking to pinch the rest of the remaining players. Another shot comes out. Another person falls, but Triste is looking great. Finds two more. Brings it to a 3k overall in the round and secures the 2v2 instead of the super disadvantageous situation they found themselves in a moment ago. Yeah, almost miraculously. I don't know what Adept was doing there. Just had a wall out, just running out the open without clearing it with Soviet information or anything of that sort yet. Definitely got punished for that with Seekers giving a lot of information. They're definitely going towards B site. Not much time on the clock though, so they can't take a teleport play if they have to commit at this point. The arrow is going to come out, and that's going to force Critical out of position right into the shots from Triste. He's on a 4K. He's looking for the ace. Scrounge is coming in, but the flash is good, and he's going to find the kill, but it's not enough as Planks flicks onto him, takes him down, and picks up the round for Black Dragon Society. I've been noticing some higher-level players making Sky look a little bit more like a duelist lately with their own cell flashes. They lurked out for a Scrounge right there, but unfortunately, it was a one-versus-two situation. And good looks uh, by the remainder of the team. 
on Black Dragon Society. Only one person left alive, but at least they had the right angle to be able to finish off that round. Everybody on the board, kill wise, and Black Dragon Society bring it almost to a tie game with one ultimate, just that cosmic divide on the Astra. I'm interested in seeing how they use this. A lot of times, you split off the map, you feel are just forced closer range fights and make the defensive team, if they play more passively, not be able to have a lot of information. But Plank's finding first kill is huge. Use that cosmic divide now to be able to split off the map and use, capitalize on that advantage. Great crosshair placement from Planks to be able to just wait until Aqua runs his little head right into the middle of where he was waiting to be shot. Now in the five on four, you said it yourself, they got an extra ulti on the board, but they still haven't even committed to a site. It's entirely possible that they decide to rotate away. Dan, though, is a little bit suspicious that someone might be on the flank, and indeed it's Scrounge. He's right behind, but just waiting for the meeting to happen. Five versus four, Emperor's still available for Valen as well, so they have a lot of firepower on the side of Scrounge, despite being down a player. You are divided. There's a Cosmic Divide. No cosmic Divide's gonna pop right in Critical's face, so he's gonna be cut off mid-shot, not be able to go for it. And Valen, taken down by Kor as he tries to peek out to deny the spike plant, and it's just blue players falling left and right now denny is the only one left and he's just trapped in the corner by all this utility he's going to be able to hear adept walking by though find one but he's gonna have to find four more if he wants to make this round a reality and it's not to be his fan from on top of the truck finds nice little shot onto denny in the corner and they tie it up four to four Nice little wombo combo there. They knew exactly where Critical was holding over towards U-Haul. They just pop the Cosmic Divide right in his face and then use the Hunter's Fury to come on top of that. So if Critical tries to dodge by going forward, run straight into the waiting arms of Dra Black Dragon Society members. Tries to stay in U-Haul run away, has to get hit by the Hunter's Fury. Tough spot for him to be in. And cutting off the information gatherer of the team Black Dragon Society, or Sprite and Pros by Black Dragon Society was a great plan there. Tied up four to four, but they use all the ultimates for that. Sprite and Pros, they have a couple for themselves to use here, but the, mo the most tactical ultimates, like we saw from the Cosmic Divide and Hunter's Fury, they're more for individual or information gathering with that from the Shadows and Empress. So we'll see if Aqua Luck can make a crazy uh, cross play thing happen and maybe drop it in the back of Black Dragon Society to disrupt and make him wonder if he's actually there or not. Uh, burn some time. Emperor's pop by uh, Valen could do a lot as far as just popping off, get a lot of kills this round. But with a minute to work with, Scrounger Pros, they're starting to slow down a lot more last. They're not being as aggressive, not as aggro as they were beforehand, which I think is a little bit interesting because they were finding a lot of success by being aggro before. Yeah, and the fact that Scrounge and Pros have laid off the aggression has just mean, meant that the early rounds of this game have ground to a halt since Black Dragon Society seems almost unwilling for early round pushes. But when the push finally comes, they're looking good as the trades are always there. And they're even able to get a little bit on top. Now, they're able to get a completely free A site. The wall comes down and so will the plant in just a second. It's Scrounge all alone right outside of Hookah. He's being held back by Triste. Denia trying to make his way through the spawn as well. But neither one of them is anywhere near sight. As the spike is ticking away, the call might come out to just save those guns. Yeah, two versus four plant, post plant situation. They had no control map whatsoever. Not a lot of utility work with either. So a save definitely makes a lot of sense. And right there, I, maybe it was a cast of curse. Who knows? Scrounger Pros, Akla, and Valen seem like they got a little impatient pushing out of bathrooms, out of showers. Just try and get some more information, be a little more aggro on it. And Black Dragon Society, they're just kind of sitting around, hanging out, waiting on angles, knowing that Scrounger Pro is a little bit more uh, tentative to go off and be aggressive like that. Got caught out one of two for one overall, and they just exploded on a side through that opening. Yeah, so they're going to be able to hold on to those guns, though. And it's not looking like money's a huge problem for the Scrounge, for Scrounge and Pros yet. Uh, they've got enough to buy into this round, at least sheriff and shields on some the black dragon society we mentioned at the top of this that this was a defensive sided map but they're playing defensively on the attack almost and it's looking to work out really really well for them yeah. why be attacker disadvantage when you just be defender every round of the game is 
working out overall so far is very interesting Ooh. and still doing the same Plank just holding an angle being defensive Dinya being aggressive and getting punished for it again scrounge pros is starting to backfire now the pro need to go into a little bit more passive and just hold the line get some information for themselves but they don't have to be too eager anymore scrounge about to do the same thing he might be running to a one versus two no, Scrounge is just going to pop that flash and get himself out of dodge, not wanting to try and take that one versus two fight. But the ulti is popped from Fan. And he's going to be walled into it. Maybe a little bit of a miscommunication because he's not going to be able to get the kill. Critical takes a little bit of damage from that. But the wall did deny Fan from being able to find the kill he was looking for. Now Scrounge takes down a depth as he tries to peek around the box, but it's not going to matter because Planks is going to come in and be good. Now that two on two, thanks to Critical, he finds another one, a fourth and Fan. One on one, Valen manages to clear it up. Wow, a lot of miscommunication there between Diamond's fan and Ada drops the wall right in front of their own Rays who pop Showstopper. So Diamond is like, I still need to use this thing, drops the blast pack that destroys the wall that they were going to use to plant with. Everything just fell apart from a little bit of miscommunication. And I got to give a little props to Critical. Been kind of anchoring himself towards U-Haul so far most of these rounds lately. And still able to find a lot of success. That Cosmic Divide earlier we called out cut him off. Ever since then, without Ultimate shutting him down, he's finding a lot of good holds on to A-Site. That round really just came down to a huge clutch from Critical, though, as he was able to pick up three kills all at once. And Fan... Really nice blast pack all the way into Hookah to take down Valen in the early round. Knock that threat off the board before he even has time to get started. Now five versus oh, four. Down. It's tied up. We're nearly into the half right now. So Black Dragon Society, they're already in a great position. They've got five rounds on attack once they defend their side of the map. So we can keep winning out this. I'm going to start expecting them to actually win out the game. Just slowing it down a little bit, though. They found their early kill. Backed off. Now they find another one as Planks. That's like the fourth kill he's gotten from that same angle. Yep. Scrounge tries to make something happen, but is only able to take down the low health fan in the process. That brings us to a four on one. Akula with the fake, uh, fake teleportation, trying to make them think something is happening. But the rest of Black Dragon Society is just going to take the fast lane, get all the way over through showers into sight, get the spike down. And this is going to be so very tough for Akula as long as they stay grouped up. They should be able to take these fights two on one, three on one, even four on one. And I think Scrounge, sorry, Akula, to be specific, recognizing this is just going to back off and hold on to that gun. Scrounge Bros, they just keep being punished for just slow walking down lanes, dry peeking angles, being a little bit too aggressive to try to get information or map control without using abilities to properly clear. And just not having a good read on the fact that Black Dragon Society, they got the good read on Scrounger Pros. They're just going to hang out. Since round one, they've been doing this kind of thing where they just hang out, hold angles, and wait for Scrounger Pros to push forward. We keep calling it out, and they keep doing it. Black Dragon Society going to be finding a lead for the first time, I think, since round one. Uh, no, they did have it. They, oh, they were had 5 two. 4 once. They were up yeah. 2 1, and they also oh, had 5 half. 4. Yeah, it's actually been kind of close. Yeah, it's been ahead. very, very close throughout the entirety of this game so far. Now, going into the last round of the half, we'll see in just a moment. Uh, Scrounge and Pros are able to get a bit of a haphazard buy going, but not a great one. Mm -hmm. If this a will be a 6-6 six, six or a 7-5. I mean, with that showstopper, it's basically, it's, it's literally a rocket launcher, so that's a pretty good weapon to have in your hand. Seekers can give them a lot of information as well as this giant laser beam to shoot through walls with Huntress Fury. What was going on there? Yeah, his gun just transformed itself into a bomb, buddy. <laughs> oh, wow, it's critical. I didn't even realize Triste was in the line of fire for that Adept going to pick him back up quickly, but the damage has still been done. I don't know if that's better for uh, for Scrounging Pros or for Black Dragon Society, though, because that Hunter's Fury is now off the board for potential post-plant utility. Not sure how much information that Aldrin really got, because they already knew they were going to be playing through a short, so just really using it to stall to allow the rest of the team to rotate, actually. And that was going to be a big flank coming out of Diamond's fan. But they're ready for it. Tristy was there, ready for it. They knew they were going to go for flanks and aggressive plays like that. 
Denia gets taken down early, and that's a huge source of frags gone. But the wall is going to fall. The Cosmic Divide is no longer splitting them up. Two players inside of this here, and Critical going to find the shot onto Core before being taken down. Now bodies are falling left, right, and center inside of Lamps, but it's the red side that comes out on top. They bring it to the 2v1, and it's all onto Valen. He's got the Empress active, but he's spotted out by the Owl Drone, so his position is known, and he's got to play this so carefully, especially with the wall here. The wall's going to fall as he goes for the tap on the spike, and he can't get the kill as Planks runs his way into Lamps. Now Valen gets it up to half, but then Tree Stage just takes the easy pick Kick, knocks Valen down and secures the seven to five by Scrounge and Pros. Plank's doing the most annoying thing to have to deal with when you're in a post plant defending side is they just run away from the fight. They're not going to challenge the one v one. We're just here to burn. I'm just going to run away. And because of that situation, Valen was popping off a little bit, feeling a little good on the shots, but had to go for at least a half in that situation so the hand was forced great job by black dragon society in a post plant 2v1 situation playing it perfectly in the lead seven and five going into the half the only thing i'm looking at for scrounge and pros is the biggest backfire on defense is that they're super aggressive very recklessly sometimes and it fell away from them as far as success goes but now they're the side that's supposed to be aggressive and push forward. So maybe it'll work out for them. We'll see if they can find a lot more success on attack. Well, speaking of aggression, Denya already making his way towards Hookah, but they're going to boost themselves up on top of the wall. It's going to be Planks and Adept. And Adept with the right click onto Denya's head going to take him down. An easy first kill for the Black Dragon Society, and they already continued the trend from last round and speaking Ooh. of the trend from last round tree stay they're gonna line up for him and he's gonna pick up three it's just left onto adept to continue to clean up and thanks to tree stay that was an easy first round of the half for black dragon society Tristy just clicking heads being a pc gamer great shots with that ghost already halfway towards our hunter's fury one thing i did want to mention about scratch and pros is team composition is they don't have any sentinels on their roster is double duelist double initiator so naturally that team composition is a lot more aggressive than if you have like a sage or other sentinels like killjoy mentioned pre-game uh so that could be why they went for that playstyle defensively more so it should work out better on offense going forward, but not if you're just getting clicked in the head by Tristy like that. So they're gonna be falling off to the side. Full aggression because it's on the eco, but it's not working out for them so far. I uh, I just want to point out that Fan managed to grab uh, and everyone's just dead. All right, <laughs> Fan managed to get a kill with the paint shell while all the shots were coming through and everyone was dying. So. I don't even know what to call that other than scrounge and pros just walked their way into a firing squad and all fell down. Yeah, it was eco round, so they just wanted to full send it, get the round over with, I guess. Uh, it could work if they caught Black Dragon Society off guard, but Tristy was just holding too strong. Fan had a grenade in the hand. I want to see that like post round report when you hit tab to see like how much damage he did. I want to see that from fans' perspective to see how much that did in that round. It probably was a lot. Going to this next round, go full buy up for Scrounge and Pros, but Scrounge dies already to fans' op they were saving for. Uh, is this what we were waiting for once they got on defense? They just <laughs> second round off or third round op rather sorry it feels like the second round because that second so round fast. was just <laughs> so fast yeah now fan just standing on top of the truck waiting for someone to peek into their crosshair no one's gonna take the bait though after well scrounge already died to it gosh this is like the perfect map for black dragons put society's play style versus the team composition and play style scrounge Bros is doing the attack the disadvantage typically but not if they're pushing out like the Scrounger Pros were doing. And now that they're on the defensive side, this is exactly their play style that Black Dragon Society was using, basically on attack. So they look even stronger and better so far than they were originally. Yeah, so just a little tip to either DNA Diff or Team Basilisk, whoever wins the other semifinal. Man, bind. Or at least don't push out on, on defense if you do. Play it. They do manage to get the spike down though. And, well, it's not gonna matter because Fan peeks out, get, does get taken down by Denny, and now Critical follows it up with two more. But Court just picks up the off of his own, finds one, switches to the. Oh, but they line up for him, and Valen sprays down two and clutches out the round for Scrounge and Pros. They're still alive, and now we have the 6 9 score, not, score line. Well, Black Dragon Society's playstyle is working out for what I just said. At the same time, there's some times where they just show a little bit of. 
uh, the not very coordinated sometimes. Where like earlier, Adam dropped that wall when Diamond Fan had the showstopper ready and then destroyed the only wall to try and make the showstopper work. That time, Korra's going for a peak at the exact same time that Planks are going for a peak. So they just lined up perfectly for Valen on the same exact angle instead of rotating around and doing a pincer maneuver or something of that sort. It's so like, it's a little bit, little bit out of coordination for Black Dragon Society. If they shore that up a little bit, I think they'll be able to take us home. But that Hunter's Fury, Valen would be good enough as well. Tristy with a big ultimate takes out that Empress off the map. She didn't pop it yet, but it could have been used for this round for a lot of aggression going on site. That seems to be how scrounging pros are getting just walloped on their attacking side as they try and go for something early. They try and find themselves a little bit of map control, but there's always someone from Black Dragon Society ready and waiting on every angle to be able to find that early kill and find that early five on four. But now Critical has the opportunity to come up huge here and they do just that. They take down Fan as they peek around the corner and they're gonna be able to use this shock dart try and set themselves up with a little space. They've taken control of A main, now Core gets hit by the shock dart, gets hit by the blind, gets hit by the second blind too, and this man is just being molly by utility over in the corner. In comes the grenade and Core is going to fall down. Now that they've taken out some of the numbers of Black Dragon Society, the members of Scrounge and Pros, they're just going to teleport away, try and make their way to the other side, but I wonder if they're aware that Adept is ready and waiting for them. Ooh, they use five pieces of utility to try to take out Core, and it's kind of working out. Now that Core is off the field, they're just going aggression onto the site. Critical finishing off taking down Planks as well. Scrounger Pros finally looking good on this half, bringing it to a 7 9 scoreline. And you know what? This could be the momentum they need. Black Dragon Society were looking really good at start, and their team composition is really good with like the Asher ability they can use and Hookah Sage to stop off the B long push, and then have the other three people A site. Been a good plan so far, but now we're going to see a little bit unorthodox. They're on a save, stacking four on B site with just a lingering Sova for information for hoping they can get a quick rotation on A site. Maybe this can work out for Black Dragon Society, but I think it might end up being a bloodbath if you don't find a really awesome flank that Strange Pros were not expecting. Uh, oh, what's going on here from the Black Dragon Society? Yeah, they're all pushing up and out long. They all have sheriffs, so it's potentially really dangerous, but Critical has the gun advantage here. He's going to be able to light up that one player down to super low health. He's going to be able to heal himself back up, but the damage has been dealt. And oh. with the really nice arrow coming in, all of them are going to be found oh, out, but Core, Core still finds those shots! That's insane. Core did that last time. There was like an anti-eco. Had to be on the sheriff. Got two big kills beforehand to win the round for Black Dragon Society. Just now came about big. It was a trade overall, but that unlocks the Empress and still gets a big pick off of this duelist on the raise that could actually just burst on a site. Now they're relying more so on Balan with the Empress still available. And a Leer can make it happen still, but Diamond's fan with the blast packs can make a stall. Three stack on A site. Dog comes in, it's going to spot out fans so they at least have that little bit of information. And as he tries to black pack himself out of danger, he's just shot down. Scrounge comes up huge for two, and it leaves it all on to Tristy. And they make their way back in from the teleporter towards Hookah, but they get blinded out. Their position is known, and they've only got a sheriff. The spike's going to go down, and yeah, everybody knows where Tristy is coming from. The second they show their face, it's just going to be a hail of bullets. And nobody finds the shot onto Scrounge! This is still such a tough spot for Tristy to be in. It's still three more members of Scrounger Pros alive. Time is ticking down. They have rifles in hand. But now Black Dragon Society, despite being down on Ultimate Economy, one to four on that. And first to Empress, but the Hunter's Fury, Showstopper, Seekers, all available for Scrounger Pros with a full buy. Uh, well, at least mostly a full buy. A couple of light armor is going to be happening there. But uh, it's going to be Black Dragon Society still with a lot more firepower than they did last round. They need to win this one out, though, because oh. Pros, their team composition is attacking focus. Diamonds fan with an operator by? Yeah, you, you saw what I saw, too. <laughs> um, the op is going to come out when I don't did not think that they had the economy to make that work. The Hunter's Fury is going to become active, though. I've got your Tristy's not going to be, or sorry, Critical's not going to be able to find anyone with it in the process, though. Just a little bit of information. Scrounge is going to pop the Seekers, send out the Flash, and Denya It's going to actually find someone. How did... He got pinged out. 
by the recon dart, and Denya just runs in and takes him down with the uh, with the showstopper. Such a fantastic play from him. Core though, he's still alive and well on site with the uh, with the overheal with this missiles. It's going to even up this uh, player count just a little bit. Beautiful job, but Brown should be able to try to find the fight. Trissy with a beautiful read on the situation. Had a good idea to scrounge, and that situation with the information they had probably was playing towards showers and just looked that way at the right time. Great heads up awareness by Tristy in that situation. Just an insane play from the Black Dragon Society. They looking a little bit shaky at the start of the round, thanks to Denya finding two. Someone was crazy. last I don't know, I don't remember the operator even being shot that round. I don't think it was. I think I, I, I I think he might have died to the showstopper before he got the opportunity to use the op. So Scrounger Pros might not know that the operator is in hands of Black Dragon Society still. I might have just missed it uh, during the chaos on the site, but that's still regardless a power point on the side of the defensive team. Timeout has been called by the defenders. So despite winning the round, going up to 10 to 8, we want to take their tactical timeout discuss the strategies a little bit they don't Take want a to moment to just slip away they've got a two round lead so it's not huge mm -hmm. they're nowhere near far enough ahead to just be super comfortable with where they're sitting so instead they're going to call the timeout take a moment to to confer with themselves and with their coach think a little bit ahead and then get right back into the action in round number 19 here of the semifinal. Starting off already, we see some aggression poised towards the A site. They have yet to com uh, they, they're not committing to it early enough yet. Diamond still has the off. But he whiffs the shot, and Valen finds the head tap, takes him down, and takes a huge threat off the board for the Black Dragon Society. Extremely aggressive positioning with the operator. Nice hold by Core. He'll even it back out as Tristy finds an advantage for the team. All that was happening, the wall was used by Adept over at Showers to secure their last orb needed for resurrection. So that's available as well, three versus three, but they can get a resurrection. There it is, Core. Wonderful person pick to resurrect. But the shutdown, no! Core comes back up, but he's immediately sprayed down, and now Tristy is in yeah, such a dangerous it. position. There are two people inside of Puka, and he just barely gets out of dodge before the smoke falls. Balin. Up for the ace, a 4k, Scrounge finds the fifth, but I mean, there's a sixth kill available this round thanks to uh, the little resurrection that came out. Going to take the teleporter to try and search for him. It's just Plank hiding back in their own spawn. Both players from Scrounge and Pros are going to get in through main, get the spike down. Planks is making his rotation, but only 30 health to his name. This is going to be ridiculously difficult. Yeah, only 30 HP, but I think you still go for this in the one versus two situation. You have a couple of rounds to give, so a save wouldn't be a terrible decision right now, but they will be able to get a full buy up, or at least mostly a full buy up next round, at the very least. So, not the worst case scenario if you lose here. You might as well go for it one versus two. That's just a couple headshots, that's all you need. Plane's gonna be running to one versus two setup though from Scrounging Pros. No, he's here. The flash is going to come, and they know his position because of the blinded indicator. And it's just a, it's just taking candy from a baby at that point. You've got a blind opponent facing the complete wrong direction. You peek out, shoot him in the back. Ooh. Nice and easy round pickup. I was wrong, actually. I miss. I remembered incorrectly. The economy actually was abysmal for Black Dragon Society. So they're going to go into save round, but I guess they would basically be a save round anyway. Just one superstar. Phantom wielder would have been the difference, but still, they can give up this round. It would be really only tied up if they lose the eco. They've won one beforehand, so we'll see what happens from this. Early aggression from Core, doing that same thing that he's been doing every single save round so far, going to try and peek out. It's going to exactly. be critical to challenge him. Arrow should exactly. come in soon. He's, oh no, is he just going to push this up right into the crossfire? Adept makes his, his presence known. Okay, they just wall it. Oh. Nice of attempt out. there. Yeah, 54 health remaining on Denya thanks to the uh, gravity well plus grenade combo and a good bit of team synergy from the Black Dragon Society. At least for now, 
Scrounging pros are just going to pull back, reset, and prepare to re-aggress on a different site. So Black Dragon Society is doing the exact same game plan they did the last time when they were on Eco and Defense. And they just saw that Diamond's Fan was on B site. When they were playing standard, they've been putting Diamond's Fan on A site. So they're now Scrounging Pro is getting a little bit of a read thing. You know what? They might be doing the same thing they did last time. Let's just go to A site. Rotation is there by a couple members. That's a little bit late. Christy falls already as well by Valen. So there's going to be a player advantage on the site. Surely it's going to be post-plant situation, but Core through showers are taking the teleporter finds Valen as well. So this could be a big opening with all the angles they have. Showstopper in hand as well. No impact from the Showstopper. Fan does not realize that they're all inside of lamps, but once he does, he finds the headshot onto Aqua. Scrounge is able to get the refrag, but Adept takes down Scrounge, and now players from Scrounge and Pros are falling left, right, and center. Critical needs to get this plant down, but he instead takes time out of his day to shoot down flanks, then puts the spike down. So they are going to be able to avoid getting timed out on the round. Now Diamond's fan and Adept both going to be trying to make their way in, but Adept falls to Critical. It's all on to Diamond's fan. He peeks out. He tries to get the shots onto Critical, but he closes it out and ties up the scoreline 10 to 10. This game could go all the way, Chad. That was a close round. Good timing by Diamonds fan. Just shots just weren't quite there to punish Critical shooting that shock dart. Wow, that that was a, that was a tough round. That was really close considering the eco as well. Last, uh, somehow Core especially just finds these sheriff shots to make Black and Dragon Society look like these eco rounds are winnable. Now they have a full buy up. They have the Hunter Spirit and Cosmic Divide beforehand. Last time they played slow, used that to their advantage to just corner and shut down Critical and U-Haul. Now that they're on defense with this combination, they go and be aggressive like Scourge were in the past. Ocular shuts it down and punishes it. Core though immediately comes in and takes down Valen as a little bit of corner. vengeance for his fallen comrade, but he's stuck in a really bad position. Oh, he's still going to no be able way. to get out of it. Dismisses, finds the headshot on Aqua, and Tristy follows it up with a Hunter's Fury taking down Scourge. Now in the four on two, Scrounge and Pros have been wiped out in this round. That is shocking. I thought uh, Core was dead at that point. Hunter's Fury comes for assist, but it would have been too late if the headshot didn't connect onto Aqua. There was blind and everything, but Core barely being able to get out alive. If you were not Arena there, you don't live. Simple as that. Doesn't matter because he was the Arena. Critical yeah. stuck inside the gravity well. His position's known. Damage comes out in spades onto him. Planks pushes out and so does Adept. But they are going to be pushed off of their positioning. So at least for now, Critical and Denya are still holding strong in this 2v4. They're trying to make sure that they don't have to take too many duels at the same time. It's only a matter of time until they get pinched, it seems. Spike is going to go down, though. They have a fighting chance in this round, and that's not something that I was expecting considering how Core started it off. Denya trades it out, but it's just Core yet again. The absolute MVP for that round runs out from the elbow, takes down Denya, closes it out. Now Black Dragon Society two away from knocking Scrounge and Pros out of this entire tournament. I'm really surprised they committed the cosmic divide in a four versus two situation with timer running down and the spike wasn't even planted yet uh i feel like that's uh you could i think you could have gotten away with playing greedy there to save that economy of that ultimate ability and use that towards this next round to try to more securely close out the game that's a seven Damn. ultimate two so that's that's a big investment of four versus two that's just how scary Denya and Critical are together. Yeah, They've got sure. 39 kills between the two of them. You want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward even in the four on two. And they did just that. They were able to take the round. Now Diamond's fan. Position is known thanks to the recon dart, but they're not going to get, not, they're not, not backing down until they're forced to by Critical. That's a little paint shell hole to throw through. Seekers out. That doesn't give a whole lot of information overall. The know people will be on A site. One person over towards U-Haul. Not anything surprising. Core gets the kill there anyway. Core coming up so big for this team so far. Akula needs to be way more careful with how he utilizes that from the shadows. He teleported right into Core's crosshairs. And speaking of right into Core's crosshairs, Denya walks his way in as well. Another headshot for Core. Three kills on the round and critical. Might not be long for this world. Oh, but the Owl Drone barely missed him. Turned around in time. Found the position. Core swings on it and gets another kill. Match point, Chad. Is this a Reina diff here, Last? Is that what's happening right now? Because Core is popping off, fragging left and right, especially on defense. It's nuts. 
Duelist diff, just... Reina diff, core diff, whatever you want to call it, this man has <laughs> been unstoppable, especially in the second half. And a lot of it, too, has been Trissy providing support. Other members of Black Dragon Society, too. Core goes aggressive, gets a kill, and just yeets themselves out of there with that ability. And they are protected by their teammates as well. They're not left alone on island as Arena. They're being supported with this aggression. It's paying off so big for Black Dragon Society. Now on that point, big opening kill for Core yet again. No! Core pushes out, manages to dismiss out of the line of fire, now heals up back to nearly full health, but it's going to be Denya. Denya takes him down before getting taken down in turn by Diamond's fan. Scrounge manages to get the kill on Planks all the way over at A site, so that's going to at least even it up a little no bit. Spike. But no spike. No no duelists here. I guess you could use Sky in that situation, but they're going to use all of their heal. On Akala to make sure he's in fighting shape. The two on three to stay alive in this bracket. It's such a tough situation to be in. They're going to split push this over towards B, maybe, or maybe not. That's their last best information gathering tools they use just yeah. to make sure they can safely get the spike. They still will need to get onto a site, and they only have a couple guiding lights to do so. That's very ambiguous information and gain from that. You can pretty much guarantee somebody's going to be a site anyway. So how Scrounge uses guiding lights would be the difference maker of whether or not they win this round. Got to be so, so very careful with how they use that. The flash is going to come in. The bird pops up. They're not in out of the woods yet, rather. Diamond Fan peeks out, finds one. Akula goes down, but Scrounge manages to get the refrag. Now it's the one on two, and the clock is ticking away. This is such a stressful situation for him, and it's going to be Tristy who peeks out and takes the win for Black Dragon Society. They are going to be moving on to grand finals. Great showing by Black Dragon Society, playing the map exactly the way they needed to. Uh, they made a couple of mistakes here and there that we called out, but overall played very good. And honestly, a lot of that was on the back of Tristy's prowess, especially that pistol round getting uh, ghost kills and doing a lot of good utility usage with that Sova. But core was like the core of the team, just popping off, especially on defense, just couldn't be stopped, just running through and winning every single gunfight that you were in, it seemed like. Especially doing that on Arena, you can't shut that kind of player down if they're just feeling themselves just like that. Yeah, and because of that, Core is going to be your VSS match MVP. KDA of 24, 17, and 1, and an ACS of 282, which is just, you know, completely indicative of how they performed throughout that map. Core, like you said, just a rock, the center of that team, fragging out round after round. But yeah, I also, like you mentioned, I got to give a lot of credit to Tristy. Uh, right there next to Core on the leaderboard, and finding them not just kills not just assists not just all that other stuff but so much information found with that sova utility setting up so many kills from their teammates and because of all that working together in tandem that means that black dragon society are moving on in bracket they have the chance to be your vss number 61 champions but before we go into that we are going to throw it to a quick break Please don't go anywhere because we'll be right back very, very shortly with the conclusion of VSS number 61. See you in a minute, chat.